Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Abraham Asadi, and I am a current psychology major at the University of Texas at Dallas with over five years of personal psychological research and study. Today, I would like to inform you about one of the concepts of psychology conceptualized in the 20th century called the concept of individuation. Okay, so what is individuation exactly? Well, individuation was a process that was conceived by Carl Jung, who was a famous analytical psychologist and psychotherapist born in 1875 in Switzerland. According to Jungian psychology, it is the process of becoming aware of one's true inner self. So what does that really mean? Well, basically, individuation is defined as an achievement of self-actualization through a process of integrating the conscious self with the unconscious self. It also means bringing the antagonistic functions of the personality into harmony with all other components of the personality. According to Carl Jung, individuation is a task that transcends individuality. A person who is individuated accepts the interconnectedness between him or herself and all of humanity. It is also a process that is only successful when the collective unconscious is incorporated into the conscious mind. And the collective unconscious is a part of the unconscious mind that is common to all humankind and is distinct from the individual's unconscious mind. Carl Jung defined individuation as a spiritual or religious process, simply because it is a process that is not simply defined from the results of empirical scientific research. It is a subjective journey that is different for each individual. The process of individuation is most definitely uh, in the psychological uh, community defined as a uh, humanistic approach because it rejects determinism and it has a strong concern for positive growth rather than pathology uh, based on laboratory research. The uh, individuation process itself. Carl Jung states that the individuation process is a task that is better to be taken on during the second half of an individual's life. And Jung made a very strong effort to describe why that was the case. He essentially says that confronting your true self with an undeveloped ego is a lot like jumping in the middle of an ocean without any swimming gear or sense of direction. Even if you survive, there's a chance that the ego will identify with the waves and lose all sense of personal agency. Jung states that the experience of autonomy is important to living a normal social life and maintaining relationships, achievements in career, and social contributions. So to put it simply, uh, according to Jung, there is a risk of losing the mental energy, the interest, uh, vitality that you need to become a functioning adult in modern society if individuation is pursued during the first half of an individual's life. As I've stated earlier, the process of individuation is essentially the process of integrating the unconscious parts of self with the conscious parts of self. That includes becoming consciously aware of several key archetypes defined by Carl Jung. The persona, which Jung defined as the mask that we often wear to socialize with individuals in society. The shadow, which Jung defined as one's antagonistic elements of one's personality, often repressed in the individual. And the anima or the animus, which is essentially defined as the male's concept of the ideal female and vice versa for the female. After an individual becomes consciously aware of those archetypes, the archetype of the self emerges, and that is the ultimate end goal of achieving individuation. It's a matter of achieving the archetype of the self. Jung describes the self archetype as the unification of the individual's personal and collective unconsciousness. It is the organizing principle of the psyche because it binds together all other archetypes. In closing, I'd like to share with you a quote from Carl Jung regarding his process of individuation.
To find out what is truly individual in ourselves, profound reflection is needed. And suddenly we realize how uncommonly difficult the discovery of individuality in fact is. So that's all I have. I hope you've all learned more regarding this concept in psychology. Thank you. Have a great day.